Hello and welcome back to the 7 Day Sedai Alpha 21 Survival Guide. Today we're going to be doing some more upgrades to the Horde base. You know, the one that completely stood against the Day 7 Horde without any issues at all. Yeah, we're going to be upgrading it because I'm just like that. But first, some viewers had a very good point in the last video, so we're going to sort that out. But first, I need to snipe this deer. I need bones for what we're about to do. So these viewers were pointing out that you can drink water from water sources with your hand, like this. And you'll see that I didn't get dysentery or lose any health, and that is because I'm using the water purifier mod, which they fixed recently to not give you health damage anymore. So now that you can just sit and spam drink as much water as you want if you have this, which I obviously knew, but I didn't think about buckets. We can take water with buckets. Now, you make buckets out of, I think it's seven forged iron? Yeah, it was very easy to make, I just had the materials lying around. So we're going to take this bucket back to our base and just place it somewhere. And we're never going to drink anything ever again when I'm at the base. Because why would I? Now, I'm not sure where I want to put this. And I'm not sure where it's even safe to put this. Oh, what if I use windows just to be a weirdo? Oh, I'm, I'm strange. And then if we take our bucket... And just pour it. Why can I not pour it? Does it have to be on terrain? Can you not pour buckets anymore? Let's try just on like grassy terrain. No, let's dig a hole. Does the bucket not work anymore? I don't think you can dump water with buckets anymore. Hang on, I need to go into a test world. Okay. I can do it here. Is it just that terrain? Let's try in a house. Yeah. Why is it not working in the survival guide world? Is it maybe the land claim block? Okay, so apparently there's just maybe something wrong with either this bucket or my save file. Because I cannot use this bucket. I'm clicking, I'm right clicking, and it's not working. So I assume my world is bugged, maybe because it's such an old world? Relatively speaking, for an experimental anyway. And the prompt to actually drink the water with my hand is really not working as it should either. I'm going to go ahead and assume that does have something to do with the fact that this world was made during the streamer weekend and isn't necessarily the fault of the fun pimps and it's more just a thing that happens when you update through several alphas. Oh hey! I can't drink from this pool either. Okay, so my world just has really, really buggy water. Well, what do you expect from an experimental, I guess? But that's weird. Okay, my point is, is you can do that in most worlds. What I was trying to do will work. We saw that in the test world, where I was able to, you know, move water around with the bucket. And you can drink with your hand with a water purifier mod and just basically like, get free water. It's not a big deal. I'm just going to... I'm going to drop that, I guess. And I wanted to show you guys the chemistry station which we crafted at the end of the last episode for those who haven't been playing. Why can I not place this? Is my world just a bit broken? Why? Oh, for God's sake. So this is actually a good opportunity to show you this. If you have a land claim block nearby and you hold E on something and press take, it'll pick it up over the course of like 15 seconds. So let me pick this up. And now it places there. Okay. Anyway, so we have all this stuff we can make at the chemistry station. The main things are gas cans. We can make 10 gas for one oil shale. We need to get oil shale from the desert though, but we also get cheaper glue crafting. It costs six at the campfire. It costs four here. If I grab some water, also got a bunch of glue I already made in the campfire there. And then we need to fuel it with something. I'll just use some frames and then we can make a bunch of glue much faster and much more efficiently in this. You can't make much at the chemistry station. But the things you can make are cheaper, so this is a good thing for us to have. Okay, so on to the actual topic of today's video. We need to upgrade our base a little bit. We want to talk about how to upgrade your base, and the things we're going to need for that is basically basic materials. But I'm also going to check the traders since they reset today. We could maybe get some concrete mix, which would be useful in upgrading my base. I, of course, have cement mixers, but I'm not a particularly efficient miner, so it would be easier to just check the traders, I think. So we'll do that first, and then we'll get onto the base upgrades. So we'll check them first, and then we'll go looking for resources, and then we'll upgrade the base. 
Now, I'm guessing you just have... Oh, I was going to say nothing useful, but he does have a triple armor pocket mod. Has he got any concrete? He's got a little bit of concrete and cobblestone rocks. For those of you wondering about solar cells, they do still exist. They're extremely expensive, but you can still get them, which I know a lot of people care about. I never use them, so I don't. Robotic turrets and a level 5 machete. Tempting, but I'm not really actually doing knives, so I don't think that's a good idea. I'll buy a little bit of wood because it's very cheap. Uh, duct tape is also very cheap, even though I can make loads of it now. Um, a little bit of concrete, a little bit of cobblestone again, very, very cheap. I'll get some forge ahead. Don't really need handy land. Grenades. 2,000 for 20 grenades. That's not a terrible deal. I would buy the armor piercing 762, but I am not investing in penetrator till a little bit later in the game, so these won't be needed. Oh wait, did I see appliances there? Oh, those are very expensive. I didn't mean to buy two. What can you make with the appliances block? Oh, you can make your own dryers and washers and stoves and fridges now. That is pretty cool. That's good for uh, builders, I suppose. Can you build those yourself? Appliances? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't pay for these, honestly. I would just craft those, but that's good to know. And there's so many paintings now. Okay, there's 33 paintings, but that's still a lot. Hmm. I'm gonna buy this for the red dye. I think the other Joel also had something with red dye in it, but it's fine. Some cobblestone rocks. Again, dirt cheap. Why not, right? Like, it just saves you a couple of seconds. Concrete mix. That's very expensive. Again, it'll save me a lot of seconds. Ooh, vehicle adventures. Contact grenades. They are very good. <laughs> Okay, so the traders were pretty disappointing, but we got some stuff. Let's head back to my base and start gathering the materials we need to start upgrading the base, which is mainly going to be wood, iron, and stone. Okay, so we have uh, 350 concrete, which should be enough to make some substantial improvements to the base on its own. So before we go out and get some more materials. Let me go to the base and apply some of this concrete because I might just get a level out of it, which will help me with gathering resources. So one of the best things that you can do to make your base more resilient is just upgrade pieces of it to concrete because concrete has 5,000 health versus cobblestone, which has 1,500. So it's a pretty substantial upgrade if you can do it. Now you can see I have already started on some upgrades to my base in concrete. I think we did this on day, I want to say it was day 10, we got a bunch of concrete from the trader and upgraded this, and I am pretty much set as far as the important parts go, so now it's just going to be upgrading every block I can to concrete, and I think we should start with the stairs because it seems more in danger than this back half of the base here, so let's do that. And we're out of concrete for now, which is fine. So we got a decent amount of XP there, not quite enough for a level. Oh, that's ugly on the outside. We'll need to do it outside next time. So what we need now is cement, stone, crushed sand, some wood, and maybe some iron. Now, wood is pretty self-explanatory. The best way you're going to get that is just chopping down trees. But cement we can actually get without bothering with putting any kind of stone in our forge. That we can get from PYs, but first I'm going to collect a couple thousand wood so that we can continue with the rest of this. Okay, there's 2,000 wood. That should do for now, especially since I don't have any minor 69er. I'm going to need about 30 more frames, I'm going to guess. I'm not 100% sure. Because I want to make an improvement to the base at a part where it kind of failed last time. So, since uh, I think this block was the one that broke last time, I'm going to extend the padding we put on here right down here. And that should just make sure that the main body of the base is less likely to take damage because it seems like these blocks here are the ones being attacked the most so we should reinforce them and we'll upgrade that to concrete once we get some later now the reason they were damaging these blocks is because when zombies fall in seven days to die especially on horde night they tend to fall hit the ground stand up and go into a mechanic called destroy area 
which just makes them start punching the wall next to them constantly like this just for ages until they eventually go oh yeah there's a person I'm supposed to be killing because I'm a zombie and I eat brains I don't punch walls I eat brains why am I punching walls a way to circumvent that though is to damage the zombie while they're in the destroy area mode now there's a couple of ways you can go about preventing the mechanic one thing you can do is make sure the zombie doesn't take any fall damage and that would involve putting basically a catcher under this bridge which funnels the zombies as they fall slowly down onto the ground so that they can just get right back into fighting me. That is a very good strategy, one I cannot be bothered doing because there's another strategy that I like which is just using a load of wooden spikes. We build like 20 of them and they're quite expensive so that's why we're getting a load of wood. That's going to take a minute to craft but basically we're going to place a bunch of wooden spikes in this area here so that when zombies fall they'll go into destroy area mode they'll be like hmm where's the nearest block to attack and they'll start either attacking this or attacking this and then they'll run into a wooden spike and go ah yes no i want to kill a person and run up the stairs now this mechanic has been nerfed in seven days to die alpha 21 it used to be really really annoying now it only happens if a zombie takes fall damage within 11 blocks of you which of course how would a new player not fundamentally and intuitively understand that video game mechanic fun pimps you're geniuses of course the zombie will only decide to break blocks when it falls a certain height within a certain radius of the player that is a perfectly accessible mechanic which would not require someone to do extensive testing and then hand out that information to everyone else. No, that is something you can discover in the game on your own, just playing normally. So our spikes are crafted after that rent. Maybe if I do like a row here and then around this, that should mean that if any zombie falls down there, they should get stabbed, but if they slide right down that, they might actually not get stabbed before hitting the wall. We'll definitely have to find out tonight, but I'm also going to do one here, 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 and here. The orientation doesn't matter, it shouldn't affect anything. And then I'm going to put some along the sides, because they also tend to spread out a little bit and start hitting these back pieces. And I'll do that evenly. And that should be more than enough to discourage an early game horde from hitting your base. You might need to use more elaborate solutions in the late game, but for right now, that should be good. So that's all the blocks we need to add. Otherwise, though, the base is pretty much good. I just need to get a bunch of concrete to turn it into concrete. Now, here's the thing. Do you need a concrete base for day 14? Absolutely not. Am I going to do it anyway? Yes, because it means that I can just coast off of using this base until pretty late in the game at least day 28 maybe even 35 i would probably want another base for day 42 though particularly on insane nightmare difficulty so i am gonna get some concrete so how do we get a lot of concrete well first you're gonna need your cement mixers which i showed how to do in another video so i'm not gonna go over it again what we need though is the materials to actually make concrete and because i'm such a terrible miner i only have one rank in miner 69er doing it the old-fashioned way of just smelting stone into this and crafting cement is a really slow process. Fortunately, the world has a lot of sources of cement ready and waiting for you. You just have to know where to look. And the places you should of course look for bags of cement is construction sites. We're looking for these brownish bags which say concrete. Quote, get erect faster. That doesn't even make sense. Concrete doesn't help you build faster. What are you talking about? Oh, it's Concrete Plus, and it's £69 of it. This game is made by children. 20 or 30 cement, depending on the size of the bag, which is way faster than smelting it. Also, if you're looking for stone for the other half of the Concrete Mix recipe, these bricks are a fantastic source of them, as well as the more traditionally colored bricks, like the red ones. I don't... Ah, here we are. These are also a good source of stone. And I could do with a little bit of stone. Most of my stone was turned into cobblestone a while ago. So if you need some clay, any kind of palette like this, in any colour, they used to only come in blue. But they come in different colours now and they give you a little bit of stone, a little bit of sand and some clay. Now I think the zombies in here respawn, so I'm going to take care of that really quickly. Also apparently I didn't take the loot from here. We got another water purifier and some terrible gloves. Okay, so this place is clear, so I'm going to dig up all of these material blocks. Also, 
if you need paper and polymers, these are an okay source of them. Oh, we got a skill point. So, I think I'm just going to go for a rank of strength and start pushing towards more minor 69er because the stamina penalties of these steel tools I'm using are pretty rough. So I would like to get that as soon as possible to make them worth using. Another good source of polymer? Those. This, this POI is great. You can also find a good source of forged iron in these, keeping in mind that I do have salvage operations and will be getting a boost in that from this, but yeah, 17 from that. I think the base is probably 10 or 8 or something like that. These also give forged iron. And so do cement mixers. Have I... Oh, oil shield. I'll actually use that for gas because gas is a pain now. Oh, actually, really quickly before Trader Joe closes, we can check and see if he has that tier 1 PY we were just at available as a quest, which would respawn all of the materials that spawn in that. Okay, he doesn't have it as a quest, that sucks, but it's definitely worth checking to see if your local trader has any construction POIs. Something you do need to know about this POI, there's a cave on the inside, and if you go into the cave too early in the game, you will die, because there is a zombie bear in there, and... I think the zombie bear is the most deadly thing in the game in terms of how much damage it does and how much health it has, so probably avoid it. Fortunately, it'll only attack you if you go in its cave and there's nothing of use in the cave other than the zombie bear, so should be fine. Okay, so I'm done with this POI and I have another big old pile of cement, some iron, some forged iron, even more stone, looking pretty good. I'm going to drive to the town in the north, the one where the other Trader Joel is, because I know there's more construction POIs there, especially a couple of working stiff tools places, which are also pretty good for these kinds of materials. Uh, I wonder if it's checking... Oh, hello. This place probably has a lot of construction materials. Okay, so this is a tier 4 POI, so, you know, if you're new to the game, consider being well equipped before you go in here. I'm willing to bet there's some good stuff in here. Not like loot. I, the loot's going to be terrible, I guarantee it, but construction supplies. It seems like the ideal place once I find the entrance. Here we are. That doesn't sound good. I feel like that was supposed to set off those red barrels and it didn't. Um, kind of underwhelming, to be honest. Oh, I see a lot of cement bags. Is this still a death trap? It used to be a death trap. I think that largely answers my question, to be honest with you. Well, what's the worst that could happen, right? Probably that, but there's water, so it's fine. Ah! Fortunately, there was a splint in one of the medicine things. And I just need to heal now. This water is supposed to, like, catch you, but... I mean, let's be honest, folks. This isn't one of those games where you can rely on the precision of certain mechanics. I don't know if he's still alive. Hey, some cement. Uh, scrapping for fun. Electrical traps. I already have two of these, so I'm just going to scrap that. And a bunch of other stuff. First aid kit could be useful if I need to heal now, though, while I'm clearing this place. I think there's a couple more zombies hiding throughout it. Forge ahead, nice. Okay. Let me check this stuff a bit, I guess. Ooh, herbal antibiotics. Right, so I'm just going to work my way down this mining everything I can find in it. 
Oh, hey, there's another construction site across there. I'm going to mark that. It's another tier four, though. I'll go back to it, you know, next week at some point when I need more supplies. Okay, that looks like all the cement we're getting out here. There was already a few hundred I gathered, though, so it's a good, like, 600 cement from this, I think. Let's get back down to the mini bike, drive home, apply a lot of steroids and a cast, and get ready to upgrade the base and then fight the horde. Right, where's my drugs box? Have I got a cast? We do. That's going to take my time down to 17 minutes. And then if we stack two steroids, that should keep me from damaging myself while I have the broken leg at all. That's helpful. And then I'm going to need to absolutely inhale some water to counteract the effects of steroids. Fortunately, I have a couple of drink items still. Let me just put all this stuff away. But first, actually, we do... Uh, let's go for, like... 200, 200, and 100, and then we need more crushed sand, okay. I have more stone in my bike. I have so much iron from that POI, by the way. And then we have even more stone in here with even more cement. So I think I got, all in all, I got like 1,200 cement, which is pretty much 1,200 concrete, which is more than what I need by quite a lot. So I have 700 cement left over, so I'm going to need, yeah, let's call it like 350 in here and 350 in here. And then I'll come back in a couple of minutes and turn all that into concrete. I doubt all of it's going to be ready for Horde Night, but enough of it will. How are my do collectors doing? They're full. Someone said you can press R on them? Ah, good. I know you can do that with other ones, but because it didn't have the button, I thought it wasn't a thing for this. Uh, I'll bring some beer for Horde Night, the emergency mega crush, you never know. Start picking up all this concrete. Food is good, and we got coffee as well. I've got contact grenades on my hot bar, which should do, but I'd rather use pipe bombs, they're a little bit cheaper. Actually, I'd rather use grenades, because they're a little bit more useless. And they do technically do more damage, but the timing of them's weird, and that's why I don't like them. Right, this one has produced its crushed sand. I'll come back for that in a bit. I don't know how long we have until Horde Night, but probably enough time to get everything I need to do done. So the last thing we were waiting to do was just upgrade the remainder of the base to concrete, and we probably have enough to do that. And then this part. I forgot to bring cobblestone again. That's fine, I'll go back and get more concrete while I go grab some cobblestone. Some cobblestone. Make a bunch more concrete. That's probably not going to be done in time for Horde Night, but I think I have enough as it is. And then I'm out of cement. Cool. Now you may be wondering, is this easier than digging up the terrain? The answer is no, however... My minor 69er is terrible, and my advanced engineering is terrible, so if I can avoid having to dig up loads of stone and smelt it into cement and then craft it into concrete, I would really like to. If I can skip a few steps, mainly getting the cement, it's worth it to me. It's certainly more interesting for you guys to watch me clear a tier 4 PY than it is to see me hitting a rock. There we go. Now the entire base, aside from like the bits we couldn't access from the outside, which is just the middle, um, is now completely concrete, which means it's more than twice as strong as it was before, which is a pretty substantial improvement and is way overkill for the day 14 horde, I'm not gonna lie to you. But uh, that's how I do things. Overkill. Let's get in here and get ready for the horde. Hope we get a lot of XP. Here we go. I mean, I have to imagine this is going to go really well, considering how well the Day 7 horde went. Oh, looks like a few of them have found the spikes down there. Oh, some dogs, okay.
Okay, we got two skill points there. I'm going to put one into strength and one more into miner 69er. Mining is just about to start becoming actually usable. So what were they doing down here? It sounded like they were going absolutely ham on it, but like from this one weird block that they must have been hitting on the way down. I am confused. They broke through all the spikes very quickly. We might need more spikes next time. But overall, yeah, it's fine. As you would expect from a day 14 horde, to be honest. I'd be quite concerned if they did break through all this concrete. Alright, let's see what loot we got. One forge ahead book is probably the most notable thing we got out of that. That horde was almost too easy. Still, it's, you know, indicative of a good base design at least. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the 7 Days to Die Alpha 21 Survival Guide. This series is doing really, really well so far compared to my old content, so I'm really glad you guys are watching it and, of course, enjoying it. I hope you're enjoying the daily uploads. It's not going to continue forever, but for this series, I plan on just doing daily until it's done and then moving on to another series I have planned for when this game is stable and strange bugs aren't randomly infesting my saves. So, yeah, we'll be doing that. Anyway, thank you to my channel members and patrons for making this video possible, and thank you so much for watching this episode, and I'll see you in the next one.